I have been very fortunate that I was hired in DeSoto School District. And I was hired at a time where we had fantastic leadership that recognized the value of history. Uh, what, and then if you remember Dr. Marilyn Lane, I was hired at a time where we had one high school, one junior high built in 1917, which I taught in the last year it was over, and uh, two elementaries. We now have two high schools, three middle schools, and I think nine elementaries. We opened up so fast I can't keep up anymore. And we've grown a lot, and we've seen a lot of change. Now, I teach at Monticello Trails Middle School. I'm not sure where they get that Monticello name from. I don't know. <laughs> so my students, um, I actually liberated, um, which is the military term for steel, um, and caught me the timeline that this historical society passed out a few years ago, where I met Marilyn Brunner Howe at the uh, reenactment. You had a timeline of the Monticello Township. It's now in all of my course syllabuses. And I've highlighted Wild Bill Hickok and Catch the <laughs> My kids are in shock with all the things that happened around there. Now, actually, this is perfect timing. This is my wife, Amy, and my three little girls. Here's Lane hiding now. And Kate, over there now hiding. Do you should stand up and wave, baby. This is in the back. Well, no, no. I wanted to point out that the value of the museums is passing on history. And while we all came in and mingled, and I was having fun with a shotgun found in the creek that I'd never seen before, <laughs> Susanna was coloring a buffalo looking at a picture of buffaloes and stampede in the book and looking at the petrified buffalo bone that's framed up in the picture there. This type of a society connects kids. That's what I do in my classroom. I've learned the power of artifacts, the power of stories, and the power of treats always helps too. But <laughs> the importance of the historical society is something that everybody has come together. And all the people who raise their hands that have been here in the display, it's the reason that when Monticello kindergarten closed, there were artifacts in that building that had moved from the old junior high the old one-room schoolhouses over the years have been stored in the basement. Somewhere there's a piano that has been played on. It's in the schoolhouse for a long like that. Now that's good that it's back in the schoolhouse. The bell back there went from a one-room schoolhouse to Monticello Kindergarten to Woodsonia Elementary. Do you all remember Woodsonia? A future Walmart site? <laughs> Which I understand if you've been here for a while. Peter Ray Rang that bell when I was in the first grade. Yes! No, to confirm this for me, I heard she rang it to start the school year and to end the school year. Yes, she did. Now, have you ever picked up the bell yourself, sir? She wouldn't allow me. No, that's nice. <laughs> well, when the school closed, the secretary called me because I'm the museum guy and said, We found this bell. It's a two hander. It's huge. It's so heavy. But I can just see her ringing that over there. That's a piece of history that would have been lost if it wasn't for the historical society. Now, the Johnson Carey. Johnson County Heritage Trust Fund Grant Review Board, my longest title in my entire life. <laughs> what does it mean? It's an amazing thing. The commissioners years ago came up with the idea of working together that they would put aside a large amount of money, two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars a year, at the discretion and recommendation of people who were interested in history in Johnson County. And we and I love she was so gracious. We gave it to them. Oh, they had to earn it. They had to fill out the whole grant process. They have to say what we're saving. How is it changing in the history? Why is it important to save? They presented to us, and I had to write notes to get all of it right. In 2006, they wrote a grant and successfully achieved that grant to create their office and library area for research and artifacts to be stored. In 2007, this entire bay, if you look around you, is now insulated and protecting so they can put more artifacts in here. And in 2008, they purchased a computer program called Past Perfect, which lets them list label and record every historical artifact that's in the collection. How many of you noticed when you walked around and looked that each artifact has a little tag on it? That's the tip of the iceberg with the history for each artifact. This program lets them write everything down. Well, the board, the county commissioners, actually listens to the recommendations and then they choose, and they're really wonderful. Ed and Annabeth, you have to give them a hug, shake their hand before they go. Oh, well, there he's right there. Hey, thank you, sir. Um, they listen to the recommendations. If they don't say thumbs up, thumbs down, it doesn't get saved. So. Our part is to do the research, and as Ramona will tell you, we have some long meetings hanging out the details, and then we help save history. It's the coolest job I've ever had in my life. And they're like, oh, thank you for your time volunteering. I learned so much. I take notes. I didn't know there was a museum there. I didn't know there was a school there. But it's all about saving history. This day is a special day. It's a grand opening. But those of you that have been working in this group, I've seen your pancake breakfast. I've seen the doors open. I've seen the lawns being mud. I watched the front over here, the sidewalk turn into a beautiful grass lawn. It's been a long haul and a lot of work and effort out of love. And I, I, as a history teacher, salute you and say I love you. Thanks for what you're doing. And I've already got a bid. I want to bring my archaeology students in for a special field trip so we can study artifacts. Mm -hmm.